Hello everyone, we are going to be looking at some structs and constructs today in order to make a rewind feature. Uh, you will need GameMaker Studio 2.3. Uh, I think this rewind feature is pretty cool, but um, you will be learning how to use constructs and structs. Uh, so if that scared you in the past, this is going to be uh, really good for you because it scared me in the past. and. Uh, I'm really happy with the way this looks, and it's a very simple way to get this to work. Um, so make sure you have GameMaker Studio 2.3, the most recent version of GameMaker, downloaded. Uh, we're not going to be going over the particle effects here, just the uh, mechanics, and I'm also not going to be showing you the platformer code, um, just the rewind feature. Okay, so let's look at my starting project. I basically have uh, some stuff already set up. I put in my uh, sprites for my background. I just want something to look pretty while I'm work on this tutorial. I've got a player in here. I've got a wall that I am colliding with. Um, that's pretty much all that's in the room right now is just a bunch of walls and my player. Um, I have uh, sprites in there for those. I have some other stuff that's for me for my particles that I want to do. Uh, none of this is actually in the game right now so don't worry about that. Um, and then I have my OBJ player, OBJ wall. Inside my wall there's no code. Inside my player uh, we just have our very standard uh, platformer code. So uh, anything you could find online, I think this particular platforming code was taken from the Sean Spaulding, you know, platformer library, um, the region uh, of animations here. I just have this all commented out. This is from when we added in our player and I want to add some animations there. But for right, uh, for right now, there's no animations. Uh, you can see this is just a normal player and he just has some very normal uh movement and I want it to uh, as soon as I hit the Z button that's what I'm going to use as my undo button I want it to start rewinding so I'm going to show you how we do that let's talk for a minute about how we want this to work so the first thing we're going to do is create an array Ew, that's a high spell array array and in this array we're going to store a number uh, it's going to be zero and this number is going to increment every single frame so it's really going to store our frame but we're going to give it a variable we're going to call it our uh, index or frame index or whatever we want to do we're going to store that in there so this is going to be our index and this is going to increment like i said every single frame so when you're on frame zero this is going to store all the frame zero info when you're on frame two, it's gonna store frame two info. Uh, it's gonna store all of that information. And that information is gonna be, of course, our X coordinate, our Y coordinate, our image index, our sprite index, our, um, if you wanna store in there, also uh, image X scale, if you wanna show what direction the player is facing, we can store all of that information and that's going to store every single frame. Um, so when we're on frame like 37, uh, it'll store all that information. We go up to 30 frame, uh, frame 38, so store that information. Now the moment we hit our undo button, uh, we're going to, instead of incrementing this, we are going to subtract that same index, and instead of storing the new information, we are going to give the player, assign the player their X coordinate, Y coordinate from this. So it's going to basically place the player back for every single uh, index in this array. So let's take a look and see how that works inside the game. Um, so let's go real quick into our objects. Let's create a new object called obj undo. So with this object, let's just go in here, close all this out. Um, let's hit add event, create. And remember I said we wanted to make an array for this. So let's create, uh, we'll call it undo array. And for right now, I'm just gonna set this equal to zero. We're gonna change that in a little bit. And this is going to equal uh, all of our new information. Every single frame, like I said, we're gonna store the X value, the Y value, and all of that for the player. So uh, we're gonna just call that uh, construct for right now, or we'll call this undo construct. And just do that. I think that's pretty good. Now, if you've never used constructs before, they work very similar to uh, normal structs. Um, this is already showing there because I made one and then deleted it. So let's right click scripts, uh, create, let's create a script. We're gonna basically do this exactly how you would do a normal script if you've never done a, a construct before. Um, so when you do normal script, you do function first, and then we give it a name, undo construct is, I'm just gonna call it undo const. That, that seems pretty good. And then you do that, and then when you do a script, what do you do? You add the curly braces there, um, and then what would you do for a normal script? You would add in your arguments that you want to pass in. So X, you would add in the Y that you would pass in. So now we have what looks like just a normal function. This is not a construct right now, it's just a function. And I would set my X equal to, I'm just gonna call this X value. 
equals x and y value equals y. So this is just a normal script right now. There's absolutely nothing unique about this script. Uh, it's going to do exactly what it shows, um, but I wanna make this a constructor, so I want to uh, basically hit constructor. I just type in constructor right there. This is now a constructor. It went from being a script to now being a constructor, uh, or a constructor, however you wanna pronounce that. Um, and then because it's a constructor, I actually don't even need to worry about that at all. I can use x and y now. Uh, it's not actually going to store the x and y value of this script. Um, these are just things that I can place in here because constructors allow you to do that. So let's go back into our undo button, create, and we want to do const, right? That's what we called it, undo const. If we just had this as a script right now, what would happen is we would assign the x to equal all this stuff, x of the undo array, um, but we can't really store information inside a variable like that. We need to store that information inside a struct. So we would do, let's see, we're looking at it like a normal script, right? But because this is a construct and we are now making a struct, all you have to do is just add the word new in front of it. So super easy. That's how it knows it's a, const, uh, a struct being made from a construct. And we're gonna call this undo struct. We're gonna call this obj player.x and obj player.y. Because what's happening is on the very first frame that this is called, we want to assign it the player's x and the player's y value so it can store that information in the array. So that's what that's doing. Um, now, this of course is only gonna do the un undo array zero, but I wanna make an undo uh, index. So I know which frame we're on and which frame we're going up, which frame we're going down. So I'm gonna call that zero for right now. And then I can just give that to the global or the undo array. And I actually wanna make this a global variable because I'm gonna be referencing it in the player as well. I think I will. Um, and we're gonna call this just global var undo index. Super easy way to make this now a global variable without having to change anything else in here. Okay, so we now have an undo array that's set up, and let's uh, create a um, step event where we assign this information in. So the very first thing I wanna do is create an undo button. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna say k undo equals keyboard check, uh, and I think I wanna use the z button, so I'm gonna do that. Now I'll get rid of all this stuff, and we'll be working this for a while, so let's just do that. So let's think about how we want this to work. If we are pressing the K undo button, what do we want to happen? And then if we're not pressing it, what do we want to happen? So if we are pressing it, we want uh, our undo index to go down. If we are not pressing it, we want our undo index to go up. And let me just show you how that works real quick so you can kind of see more or less what's going on. Uh, let's just show message. And don't forget to add that undo button into the room because uh, I always forget to do this and it causes problems. So make sure you add that in. Okay, so you can see down here with our values, uh, our index is going up every single frame. And if I press the Z button, it is now going down every single frame. So this is how it's basically going to tell where our character is. And we're just gonna be changing the X coordinate or the Y coordinate based on when uh, we are pressing the button or what frame he's on. Um, you'll notice also this goes negative, so we don't want it to do that because we want to start on a zero frame. It's not gonna have any information from before the uh, button was actually created. So we're gonna say if undo and undo index is, gr uh, let's see, greater than zero, then we can do this. Okay, and what do we want to do when the undo index is increasing? We want to give the player, um, we want to store the player's information, right? So. What we'll do is we'll just take that exact same code we had from our undo button. Let's go to our creates. Uh, we stored that information here, didn't we? So let's go in here. Um, and in our step event, we're gonna paste that. So that is going to store the player's information uh, every single time the undo index is increased. I'm actually gonna close this because it just keeps going up and up. Um, and then, in here, I want to assign it every single time it gets decreased. So I'm gonna say with obj player. 
let's do our let's change our x value equals um, we want to make it equal whatever this is this is going to be what's storing our information so undo array undo index and I want to say dot x that will store that and if I duplicate that using control D hit Y just change these to the Y coordinate uh, one thing you have to do as well is because we're an OBJ player it doesn't actually store any of this information in the player it's all in our uh, OBJ undo button so we have to do other here so hit other dot undo array and hit F5 to play the game so now we move around and then when I press the Z button and hold it down we are now reversing time that is super cool and we're getting this weird little glitch going on right there so the reason this is happening here is because we still have our gravity and all of our player movement activated right now as we're holding down the Z button which is not quite what we want to happen we want to make sure the everything is basically disabled when uh, we are pressing the undo button so we can go into our OBJ player and I'm just going to put right here above our platformer code above our animations we can still get our input if we want to because we want to do our k undo and I'm just going to copy over my k undo uh, code from the from this right here because we also want to know if we're pressing the undo button in our player as well so let's just say if k undo exit that's going to keep me from activating any of our code over here so press play now and if I rewind you can now see it basically disables any kind of player input while I'm pressing the K and do button which is exactly what we want there so that's the end of the first part um, if you just want an undo button you now have that you can go on your merry little way um, we're going to just make a few little modifications now and uh, make everything look really nice so the first thing I want to do is I want to change the speed at which it's rewinding I want to make it rewind a little bit faster so I can go into my obj undo let's set a speed that I want this to undo at so let's just say undo speed equals I'm gonna say two one would just be the normal undo speed that it's already doing um, and what we're gonna say is minus equals undo speed for our undo index so it's just instead of going back one frame every single frame it's now going back two every single frame so that's going to make everything appear much faster so if we ran that right now we may end up getting an error you're going to get it like 50 percent of the time if we're on i believe an odd value yeah because what's happening is we were on one we took away two and now it's at zero so you also have to do less than undo speed over here instead of zero and that should fix that there you go solve that problem okay and we can go a lot faster that way you can change how fast you want to how fast you want to rewind at um, the other thing you can do is if you want to make it proportional to how far in you've gone like for example if I die and I want to rewind to the beginning I don't want it to take forever to rewind so what I can do is I can do undo speed equals let's just say the thing that's changing every single frame is going to be our undo index so if we do like undo index what's going to happen is this is going to go up super high I could do something like div uh, let's just do div 50 what this will do is it'll say okay your your undo index is at 50 uh, I'm gonna change your speed to 1 because it divides it by 50 and gives you the whole number that divides into that if it's at 100 your undo speed will be 2 if it's at 150 undo speed will be 3 um, so that's one thing we can do but we're gonna run into a problem and let me just show you what that is so I've let this run for a little bit where now you can see our object index is uh, or sorry our index right here is up in the 900s to thousands I press the C button it's gonna go really really fast and then it's gonna slow down a bunch and then it's gonna to come to a complete stop you can see it's now come to a complete stop I didn't really move at all so you can't really tell how fast everything's going but if I just like bounce around a little bit here and then hit Z you'll see it slows down gradually and then again it comes to a complete stop at 49 we don't want that uh, so what we're gonna do is just say max 
we don't want it ever to go below one. So we're gonna say either the max, uh, either it's this really high number over here, or at the very minimum, it's gonna be at least one. Um, and then you can change how fast you want it to go. Like if I don't want it to ever go one, I could always just say two or something like that. I'm just gonna do like, I'm gonna do two. I think that's good. Okay, I've been letting this bounce for a little while. We're out at over a thousand. And you can see when I hit the Z button, we go really fast and then we slow down and we're back to where we started. So that is a really cool addition to that. So the last thing I wanna do is I want to add in, I don't wanna use this dumb little smiley face guy. I wanna use an actual player. So let's just change the sprite real quick. We're gonna change it to SPR player idle. Let's do that and make sure my collision mask is set to the SBR player idle instead of same as the sprite because it's gonna cause problems down the road when we're changing animations. Um, and I wanna leave all of this the same. Uh, platformer code is gonna remain the same, but I'm gonna reactivate my animations that I've already made. Uh, you can copy this right here if you want to and have your different sprites that do these different things. Um, but this is just stuff that I'm using. Um, what I want to do is, you can see if I now play the game, I now have a perfectly working character, but when I hit the Z button, it's not actually storing any of my image index, it's not storing my sprite index, it just stays on the same exact sprite, and uh, the same exact direction they're facing, the same exact uh, image index, so they're just frozen. The way we fix that is we go into our OBJ undo button and it's already deactivating any kind of animation checks as soon as we hit the undo button. So I'm gonna go into my constructor here. Let's um, add in some additional things that we wanna store. So I'm just gonna say my image index, my sprite index. I'm doing this a little bit different because I can't use X and Y the same way I did that. I can't just say, uh, sprite index because game maker is not going to like that. It's going to say what the heck I read I know what a sprite index is this isn't a sprite index So I have to actually use a different word for that image index sprite index and I also want to store my image X scale and store those up here Okay, so this is all we need for our constructor We've now added in the additional details here now. Let's go into our undo button and anywhere we call that constructor and created a new struct, we need to now change that. So the first thing we did that in, it was in our create event. So we hit new, undo const, and then we have all of these. So let's just add in now. I'm just gonna do this on a new, new line. We want our OBJ, let's see, if we look at our new, construct, uh, new undo const, it actually tells us everything that we need down here. So we have our image, index, our sprite index, and our scale, our X scale. So say obj player dot, I'm gonna save this because I'm, or copy this because I'm gonna be using that a lot. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to copy this because it's the exact same thing we do in the other area, if you remember. Yeah, we just stored an undo array right there. Just paste that. So now we're storing all that information every single turn. Now we gotta give it back to the player. So that should basically be all we need. Let's just double check and make sure all of that is working. And I am moving around and I hit the Z button and we now have a perfect undo button. So great job everyone. You made an undo button that works uh, perfectly and doesn't ever go outside of the array index. Um, you are all set for a braid style game or to reverse back to the beginning of the game every single time something happens um, that's negative. So great job. Um, I will see you in the next tutorial.